One of the issues that I sit with right now is that uh, churches, instead of helping people, are actually hurting people. And, and I have a big problem with that. Um, but it's wrong perceptions, it's wrong facts, it's erroneous teachings, it's being deceived, it's a lack of spending time and so forth. So I want us to go to um, Luke chapter 16, and um, I just want to get into, um, give a little bit of a background about this morning so that those who weren't here just pick up. Um, we spoke about three important words. Number one was wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge is simply information. Um, understanding is comprehension or understanding. You understand the thing. And then wisdom is how can I apply what I have learned. The, th the biggest problem I see in churches today is that we do not apply what we have learned. We hear you have to lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover, but yet we don't pray for people because we are afraid. We think, well, you know, what, what if it doesn't, what if that person doesn't get healed? Whether the person gets healed or not is not your responsibility because you're not the healer. Christ is the healer. And if God wants to heal that person, He will. All He needs from you is to be an obedient person that will put into action what He has learned and what He has seen in the Bible. All right. So the church needs to stop talking and begin to do a lot of things, stop prophesying and begin to profit and stop praying and I know people are going to criticize me for this one, but it's fine. Stop praying, but start working the principles of God. We, we discussed that this morning, so I'm not going to go into that again. We ended up with um, a couple of things that I said. Um, if you have a job from nine to five, you will always be poor. Why? Because a salary um, is someone's estimate of your value. And if you settle for a salary, you are agreeing with the estimate. You're saying, I, I agree that I'm only worth a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand or fifty thousand or whatever. Um, and, and we need to break that thing because that's not the heart of God for you. And then we spoke about the difference between a job and a work. Um, Job is a wrong perspective, but if you begin to work what God has put in your heart, what God has blessed you with, what God has favored you with, then things will begin to change. Don't allow somebody to control your value. A salary is somebody's way of controlling your value. Then we spoke about employment and deployment, and then we spoke about why is it important that we buy books and shut off the TV? Because the TV is your poverty vehicle. So while you are relaxing, the world is working. While you are watching your Netflix, the world is actively putting into, into, into practice the principles that God teaches. And here's the thing. The Word of God does not differentiate between people. Don't think because you're a Christian, God has to bless you. No, it's, it's unbiblical. And, we, and, and I'm going to deal with that um, in a moment. So we need to shut off the TVs. We need to buy the books. We need to use our time effectively from after we work until we go to bed at night. We need to use that time effectively to train ourselves, to teach ourselves, to give ourselves knowledge, to give ourselves understanding. And then, and, and that's one of the things I've done for quite a while in my life is I've read a lot of books. I can't remember everything that I've written, but I've read a lot of books, um, and I've taken out of the books what I needed um, to change the way I think, the way I feel. And so today I think a lot different than I did 10 years ago because of the time that I took. So the reason you are what you are is because you made yourself the way you are. You cannot blame anybody else. And again... Don't let, for a, don't let for a moment the world tell you, because you only have standard 8 or grade 10, eh? um, that you're worthless. Or you don't have a degree, or if you don't have a diploma, or you don't have a certificate, or you don't have whatever. Um, that does not determine your success in life. It, I know people that, 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 have, that have barely made grade 10. And they kind of like had to pay the teacher to get through grade 10. But they've made great successes in their life. 
I know of people that have failed maths in matric, but yet are, are financially secure. So it doesn't matter what you did there. It, it's, you have to get another mindset. You have to get information and then begin to apply that information into your life. Okay, so in Luke chapter 16, um, uh, verse 8, the Bible says, Jesus said that, the, that the, the children of the world um, are wiser than the children of God. Why? Because they put into practice the principles. Okay? So the, more, the world is more shrewd, is more wiser in dealing with their own kind than the people of light. So because you are a Christian does not mean that God will automatically bless you. It doesn't work that way. If you don't put into practice the principles, nothing is going to change. So we're going to get into that in a moment. So um, God's Word does not play favorites. If a sinner will put into practice the principles of the Word of God, they will function. They're going to function. Look at, look at the musicians. Look at the TV stars and movie stars and whatever. How, how much do they give away? And they just keep getting and getting and getting. Why? Because it's a biblical principle. They are practicing a principle, even though they don't understand the principle, they are practicing the principle, and because you are giving, you are receiving. When, 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 you know, we've always done this. When we have stuff, we give it away. And uh, two years ago, I bought a house, and it was completely furnished. So I sat with a house that was completely furnished, and I sat with another house that was completely furnished. So what I do with everything? So I go away. What happens? I it's a principle. If you give things away, it, things will come back. If you bless somebody with something, it's going to come back. All right. So the, um, the whole thing comes back to management. How a good of a manager are you? So let's go to verse 9 in Luke chapter 16. And the Bible says, And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends. And let me go to the NIV translation. He says, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Now remember, I said this this morning, that Jesus is speaking. This is Jesus speaking. So Jesus is completely confusing our theological teaching, that we need to separate from the world. We need to be one side. We need to be holy. Jesus says, no, make friends with the unrighteous mammon. It's a profound statement that we have to see because Jesus has a way and a reason why he's doing this. The church says, stay away. You can't be part of the world. You mustn't be part of that financial system, whatever. But Jesus is saying, you need to step up and become, and, and become friends with them. So why does Jesus say this? Because here's the, here's the shocking reality. The world has got your money. To who does all the money in the, in the world belong? To who does all the gold, all the silver, all the cattle on a thousand hills? The, everything. If you read your Bible, everything belongs to God. And are we heirs of God? Yes. But being an heir doesn't mean I have received. So while I'm still praying and prophesying and, and doing all of my godly or um, religious things, the world is saying, well, let's... Let's, well, let's, do, let's do business. Let's, let's, do, let's put the principles into practice. And what are they doing? All the wealth is going in their direction. So we need to understand we are doing something wrong. And we need to change that because they've got our money and we need to get it back. It's not theirs. Because it's there because God wants us to do something with the money. But God's not going to be unjust and just give you money because you are nice. It's not the world's money, it's yours. But they will receive the wealth transfer if they put into practice what they're doing. So, how do, we, how do we know what are they doing? We have to find out what they are doing. A lot of people say, um, when, there's, you know, when somebody does, or somebody excels in a city, then everybody says, mm, I think he's smuggling with diamonds. 
Because, you know, it's impossible for them to, you know, in our economy, become wealthy. Uh, and that's a lie. They're doing something, and if you want to know what they are doing, you need to make an appointment with that guy and say, listen, tell me what are you doing? How are you doing this? Because they know things that we don't. And that's why they're prospering. It helps not you drive by that ou and say, I crap some of your car, because they know a new Porsche is bought. So by the way, does your Porsche want me to drive? It's bought with your money. But if you don't know that, you'll never, and you don't renew your mind, you'll never change. Okay. So, um, ver- so, the, so the next part of that verse says, so that when it is gone, look at what the Bible says. When what is gone? When wealth is gone. So God wants you to be wealthy now and unwealthy later on. Why? Because what do you need money in heaven for? Nothing. No money, in any case, no amount of money that you can gather on earth can even buy one of the 12 pearly gates. All the money in the world is not enough. But God wants us to have wealth. He says, when it is gone, when the wealth is gone, you will be welcome into eternal dwellings. All right? So, let's look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, and I want to show you a couple of things. It starts off with whoever. So, whoever does not, does not say, only the Christians can be trusted. It says, whoever. So whether it's a sinner or whether it's a saint, whoever can be trusted. Now that word trusted means to be trustworthy, to believe. Here's my question. Can God believe you? We, we say we believe God. But the question is, can God believe you? Can you be trusted? If God would give you a million rand today, what will you do with it? Ek weet, a paar vrouwens het al klaar die hele troe is uitgekoop. Skoene en rokke en... en. But that's not why God wants to bless us financially. Whoever can be trusted, whoever can be believed, whoever can be faithful, he says, with very little... Here's the thing. Now, that word very little means in size, in amount, in importance, and in rank. You know why a lot of people, why a lot of Christians are, are poor? is because they, they, they miss one of these things. But let's talk about in rank. So, I give you something to do in the church. I tell you, listen, I need you to check that the toilets are clean every service before we start. Would you please check that? And then you tell me, eh, do you know who I am? You know, I own my own business. Why should I do this? Well, I know of a multi-millionaire, a multi-millionaire who attends a church and what he does is he cleans the toilets. He has enough money to buy the church. But he cleans the toilets. Why? Because you have to be entrusted with little. And you'll see it in a moment. If you can be be in rank, come and say, I will serve and do whatever I need. Because it's not about serving me. It's about serving God and His kingdom. So when I come and you open a window or you switch on a light or you greet somebody at the door or whatever, you're not greeting them because you are impressing me. You are doing it because you're serving God. Amen? Amen? So we need to understand that it's not, oh, you know, the pastor has put these people in place and this is how it's supposed to function. No, no, no. no. You are serving God. So when you're cleaning that toilet and it's filthy, then you can say, God, I'm doing this for you and your kingdom. Because if you're doing it for me, you'll only do it one week and then you'll be done. And he said, I pastor can say, hey, toilet's going on. He says, who can be trusted in, in very little? Now listen to what the Bible says. Can be trusted in very little, can also be trusted with much. 
So little management of the little will attract the much. I'm going to get to a couple of things. Now it says further, and whoever is dishonest. Now that word dishonest means violate the justice, unjust, deceitful, and who, who deals fraudulently with others will also be dishonest in much. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying if you cannot manage a little, if you cannot be trusted with something small, the same attitude that you have towards the small, you will have towards the much. If you say, there's no way that I'm going to clean toilets at a church, there is no way. If God cannot trust you with that, how do you expect God to give you a toilet business? How do you expect God to trust you with a million rand if you cannot take care of a hundred rand? Because the little and the management of the little determines the attraction of the much. But we are continuously praying for more. God, I want more. But then God says, what are you doing with what you have? Here is a lot of wind. And so like by tiende betal. Jy leeg man. If you cannot pay tithes on a hundred rand, you'll not pay tithes on a thousand rand, and you'll not pay tithes on ten thousand and a hundred thousand. The biggest thing in business for me when I started was to change my mindset. Because when you buy things, you have a business and you've bought things and now you're selling them and money starts coming in and now you have this money. And for me to pay out a thousand or five thousand rand was at one stage a little bit of an issue. But you get over it. But now you get to it. Jy meneer, hy knop die druk vir 50.000. Jy double check alles. Die nommers, die name, die hele story. Het jy alles reg? Jy het bezig het aan die van die praat. And then you begin to, you know, and, and you kind of like get a spasm. Your finger kind of like, why? Because you're not used to it. Now to do it, it's easy. I know, I just click, click, click and we're done. Finished. But every time you go to the next level, when you are faithful with the little, you attract much. Now you get to do that, and you get faithful with that, then more is attracted, and more is attracted, and more is attracted, and eventually you have much. But it starts off with a little. So we have to stop asking for the more, and we have to effectively manage what we have. If you cannot, let me put this in a practical sense. If you cannot manage your house, your wife, your marriage now, don't think you can trade it in for somebody else. It's going to be better. Doesn't work. If you cannot handle this one, you won't be able to handle that one. No rocket still. All right. Now verse 11. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, listen to what the Bible says. If you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Now, the question will be, what is true riches? True riches is, let's just talk a little bit about tithing quickly. If you tithe, the Bible says that God says, if you bring your tithe to the storehouse of God, then I will open up unto you the windows of heaven where are all the treasures hidden in heaven but if i don't pay my tithes god will not open the window and if god doesn't open the window i have no access and if because i have no access is now i have to understand go and find out why is heaven closed why is the realm of provision closed why is the the level of of provision not coming as I expected. And it's not God's fault. It's always ours and it can be found in how am I working with what I have. 
if I'm not faithful with what I have, then I am in reasonable trouble. So worldly wealth is coupled to true riches. If I want God to open heaven for me, and, 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 and through my declaration I can call into being whatever I need, and Philippians 4.19 says, and God shall supply all of my needs, then something is wrong if my needs are not met. Somewhere I am not faithful with what I have been entrusted with. I, if you have been entrusted with children, it is a responsibility. And you are going to stand before God for what you have done with your child. You cannot say, oh, well, you know, the world and, and the school system, and he got in, you know, into trouble, and he got into drugs, and he got into all of these things. It is your job to keep him focused. The Bible says, train a child. Train a child. Training is intense. It's not that you think that you don't have to do it. No, 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 you have to train a child in the way that he should go. Why? Because you have been entrusted with something special from God. So, so if, if, if we practice, um, if we become good stewards of the kingdom riches, and we take care of limited wealth, dimensions of wealth will open to us. There are dimensions of wealth that we have never even accessed yet. That's the mensies van rijkdom wat ons nog nie is gesien het nie. And and some of them are relational, ex experiential, spiritual, and financial. But there are there are there are dimensions. Verse twelve says, and if you have not been trustworthy again, Jesus is still speaking. And Jesus said, if you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? The principle is constantly repeating itself. Management is important. And management cannot be done without wisdom. That's why I said the three words, understanding um, uh, knowledge and wisdom are important because right through the Bible you need to get information, you need to get understanding, but then you need to know how to implement all of these things because it comes back to that. So, and we're going to get into the house of God in a moment, but let, let's just carry on because I want to do something. Let me give you a couple of examples. You have a motorcycle, right? Now you're riding this motorbike and it's raining and you begin to pray, Father, please give me a car, give me a car, give me a car. And then what God does is He goes and has a look at your motorbike. And when He gets there, there's oil all over the thing. It's not been serviced. It's dirty. Tires are worn. And then God says to Himself, why? If I cannot trust you with a simple motorbike, why must I give you something more expensive? I, I do this, and, and I'll, I'll show you a couple of things that I've done in my life. For, here's another thing. For example, you are hiring a property. It's not yours, you're just hiring the property. But now something breaks. It's like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, you go to the toilet, you switch on, poof, there's an explosion, and the, lamp, yeah, the light fitting is hanging out of the roof. What is your first reaction? Your first reaction is you grab your cell phone, you phone the landlord and you tell him, this dump that you have sold me or that you have rented me, it's falling apart, you need to do something about it. And you feel good. And you have on your place. But you know what? God is actually looking at you to find out how will you look after somebody else's stuff. He's actually looking to see how are you going to fix the problem. When we rented houses, um, we rented a, a couple of houses in our life. And um, tell you about Lady Smith. We went into Lady Smith. We lived in a reasonably um, good area. But it was a, a, um, uh, one of the uh, railway houses. And um, so when we moved into this house, it had cream paint. I think it came out of just after Noah came out of the ark, the paint was painted on the wall. It's old. It's dirty. It doesn't look good. Now, I can easily say, yeah, 
I'm the pastor. You should, you know, clean up this place. And it shouldn't look like this. And, and, and so what we did is we said, I understand the principle. And so we started fixing the house up. Didn't ask the people, can I do it? I just did it. Went and bought paint. Now you've got to understand, I'm now in this church. There's, there's no money in the church. I, I'm not earning a salary from the church. I'm trusting God to put food on my table, petrol in my car, a roof over my head, all of this. I've got to trust God to do this. But now I go and I say, I'm, I'm, I don't want to live like this. So I start fixing up the house. I put in dado rails, everything we've done here. We've painted it two colors. and yeah, it more, eh? So the day I leave the house, the house is in a better condition than one, when I went into the house. Now I know what your mind is saying to me, but, but, but the landlord or the owner of the house is not going to repay me for what I've done. Which is true. He won't, and they didn't. But I wasn't trying to impress the landlord. I was trying to show God that he can trust me with my own property. And so, in, we fast forward, we've had two properties, and at one stage I sold off the one, but we still have another property, but I can look after a property, I know how it's done. When I lend somebody's car, I normally would do this. When we go down to Cape Town, I was given, a couple of years ago, we went down to Cape Town, I was given an RS Audi to ride. Man, lekker. Now, here's the thing. How are you going to drive that thing? Want jy weet, jy kom ons nou hier met jou Hyundai i10, en nou kom jy nou onder in die kap, en hierna ons geef jou RS Audi, om jy te rui. So what a lot of people do is, they find out if this thing can spin in all its gears. You got to understand, God is watching you. Because he wants to see, how are you looking after somebody else's property? Jesus said, if you're trustworthy with someone else's property, then he will give you your own. So now we drive this vehicle, I, unlimited kilometers, I can go wherever I want to with the car, I can do whatever I want with the car, so we go and we ride, and when, we, when we're done, before we fly back, I go to a, a, um, a place and I have the car washed. Once the car is washed, we went around, filled up the tank, tot boe, ek weet jy, en sê my bestuur, nie, verstaan jy, weer eens, my dad turns 84 in a couple of months time. He, he, he speaks to me, he says to me, do you know how much money we spent on petrol this month? I said, no, tell me. He says, nearly 500 rand. <laughs> I said, dad, I said, dad, can I tell you something? I said, for me to come up from where I live to Johannesburg and back costs me 2,000 rand excluding toll gates. I said, you have nothing to complain about. Nothing. Your car runs like 500 kilometers to a liter. Mine did not train five. Major difference. But, but you're, you know what I'm saying? So now I fill up this car. It costs me a lot of money. So I fill up the car and I pick up my wife and we go and we pick up the guy whose car it is. And he says to me, when he gets in, I give him the key. I said to him, thank you very much. He looks at the car and says, what have you done? I said, what do you mean? He says, why did you wash it? I said, because I did. So he gets in, switches on the car, sees the tanks. He says, why did you do that? I said, because I drove the car. He says, but you don't have to. He says, I have money. I said, I understand. I know you've got much more than what I have. But that's not the issue. The issue is I'm practicing a biblical principle. I'm giving you your property back in a better condition than what I received it because I want God to understand that I'm trustworthy. I am faithful in little. And that He can trust me even with my own stuff. So, so, so what I'm trying to tell you is, Little will attract much, but it's, it comes back to management. Are you a good manager, right? So, let me see where I was. Okay. Okay. We're on the next page already. Okay. 
Now, here's another thing. reason why Christians stay poor is because they neglect the house of God. And, and when I say this, I, I'm not trying to get money from you. I need you to understand this. I, you should know my heart by now. I, I'm not one of those guys that try and manipulate you and say, Ooh, he weet, yes, die wind het die plate van die dak afgewaai en het lek in. En oe, die jyre gaan jylle vandag een dubbele seen gee, as jylle nou honderd rand gee. Ek raak naar vir die goed. Because that is only a specialized form of beggary. And I don't beg. Ek staan nie met die borkie by die rode, by die, by die rode en sê, help as die Heere sê nie. No, no, I tell you what the Bible says, and I know how to, I know how to get money and, and get the job done. All right? So, if you manage other people's property, God will bless you. Now, because we don't take care of the house of God, things happen. Now, I want you to go with me to Haggai chapter 1 and verse 2. And I, and I want to just give you a couple of things there. And I'm going to read from the NIV translation again. Now, Haggai chapter 1 verse 2. The background is that Israel was in, in, um, in, in Babylon. They've now been set free. They were given the right to rebuild the temple. Something went wrong. And for 14 years, no building took place. And this is now when Haggai steps on the on the scene, and he tells Israel why things are happening. And I want you to see what the Bible says. Not what I say, but what, let's look at the Bible. It says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. The people say, the people say. Jy weet maar, hulle sê. Wie is die hulle? Ons het altyd gesê, hulle vreed skille, nie? The time is not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you, yourselves, to be living in your paneled houses while the house remains a ruin? Verse 5. Now, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. So what are you doing that is in violation of, of the law of God for him to bless you. So there's, they're doing something wrong and he's going to show them. It says, number one, number, verse six, you have planted much and harvested little. You eat but never have enough. You drink but never have your full. You put on clothes but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Kan ek vir jou die, die moderne weergave gee? Pastoor, my, my geld hou net van die einde van die maand tot die einde van die aand. Hoekom? Wat gaat er in jou beersie? If you don't have money in your purse and there's holes in it, you need to plug the hole. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Now he says, verse 8, Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored. God takes pleasure in a house. Right? Verse 9, You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. Here's the reverse of the process. Little will attract much. But abuse of much will attract little. The principle works both ways. You have to see this. But see, it turned out to be a little. What you brought home, I blew away. Here, how all blast. He says, I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of who? You. Because of you. I will put your hand on your heart and say, I is the reason. Who comes to It's not God, it's me. 
The Bible says, he says, you expected much. You brought home. I blew it away. Because of you, the heavens have withheld their due. In other words, what was supposed to be a blessing now becomes a curse. Because the opposite to blessing is curse. And it starts with me. It's not God. It's I am violating a law of God. And then he says, I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil and everything else. And the ground produces on people and livestock and on all the labor of your hands. So what's, what's God saying? He says, you can work until you drop down dead. There's a curse. Why? Because you're violating a law. Look after the house of God. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, bring your tithes unto the storehouse of God, so that there may be meat in mine house. Then prove me therein, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out on you a blessing that you cannot contain. Let me help you here. People say, but pastor, I've been paying my tithes, and I've been paying my tithes, and I don't see any money coming in. Well, you're missing the point, because Malachi doesn't talk about money. It talks about blessing. The word blessing is, the, is the, um, uh, the Hebrew word barak. And barak means to speak a, a word and to command a favorable outcome. So what's God saying? He says, I will give you the blessing. I will give you the ability to speak into the supernatural realm and to call anything that you need and it will manifest in the physical. So God is giving us more than money. He's giving us the ability to call the things. I don't need money to buy a house. I don't need money to buy clothes. If I understand the principles, all I need to do is, I need to go and stand before the windows of heaven and say, I can see this. Why? Because it's been opened up. I can counteract, and I can prove this to you, I can counteract anything that the enemy will throw at me. Economic downturns, I can counteract it. Um, Malachi chapter 3 verse 11. I want to show you this. Because you pay your tithes, I want you to see what God does. And, and here's the whole thing. He says, he says um, God has called a drought and, and stopped everything. And, and no matter how much you are going to work, nothing is going to change. But in Malachi chapter 3 verse 11, the Bible says, And I will rebuke the devourer. God says, if you do what you are supposed to do, I will protect you. Hoeveel keer het jy al gebid, Heere, ek bestraf hierdie duivel wat my geld steel, en my, en my so dat, just get into the word. He says, and I, God, will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. In other words, your business will be successful. Your job will be successful. You will flourish. Neither shall your vine drop its fruits. In other words, what you are producing, it, it won't go bad. It will stay there. Before its time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Go to verse 12 quickly. And all nations shall call you happy and blessed. For you shall be a land of the light, says the Lord of God. Lord of hosts. So if we practice the principles, we can counteract droughts. Because God is the one that will send that drought over my life. But if I begin to operate in His plan and do what He asks of me, then I will receive a blessing. I'm not worried about the economy. I'm not worried about the recessions. They talk about recessions. They talk about COVID. Remember COVID? They said, whoo, how many churches are closed? How many businesses closed down? How, how many, all of the, you know what? We made more money in this church during COVID than we did when we were open. Makisani. Every other per person I speak to, pastors, they say, whoa, man, COVID was terrible. I said, praise God for COVID. I work less, got more. It was lekker om met jou hempie te preek en jy het jou pajama broek aan en niemand kan het sien nie. So ek het nie so hard gewerk, so dat ek nou moet werk nie. Dat is makkelijk. 
Jij dit gesing in Bloemfontein, ek het gepreek in Virginia en allemaal het gesien, and we were happy. But why? But it's not because of what we, it's because of what we do. It's, we practice the principles. And because we practice the principles, we're not bothered with, oh, yes, daar kom, en daar moest nou weer sprake van nog so iets wat kom. Who cares? God still stays God. He still stays true. And if God can take care of 3 million Jews in the desert, giving them water and food every day, God can take care of you. So, so the reason why many Christians are, are um, experiencing economic lack, number one is because they neglect their responsibility to the house of God. In other words, they're not paying their tithes, they're not doing their offerings, they don't do their service, they don't know all the... They don't know all the... I can't even know that. My pastor has enough help. Geheim, ek het nie. Ek werk nog daan. But that's the number one reason. We neglect the house of God. I've always been like that. If I step into my church, into this building, and I see something wrong, I fix it immediately. When, when I see something wrong, I get it fixed. Why? Because I want to take care of the house of God. Because I need God to take care of me. The least I can do. So we are doing things, and because we are doing things and we're not talking about it, we are being blessed, and so I'm trying to get, teach you some of these. But the second thing is, some people practice the principle and they don't see the full return. Why? Because they are being disobedient in an area of God's house. Remember we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago and some of the business people came and asked me about this. We, talk, we spoke about kingdom financiers. Being a kingdom financier does not mean you just give money. It means you know why you're giving money for what specific reason. There are people out there that are supposed to pay for buildings. And by the way, wake up, we need another building. There are some people out there who are supposed to finance evangelism. There are some people out there that are supposed to finance pastors that haven't got salaries. There's, there's people that need to finance evangelism that goes out and, and outreaches and programs. There are people out there that are supposed to finance a specific place in the kingdom of God. And just because you are giving money doesn't mean you are blessing God. It means that you're being disobedient to the call of God upon your life. Find out why God gave you your business. What does your business need to finance in the house of God? And when you do that, the blessing of God comes upon you. My business has a specific function. It's not there to make money for me so I can live well. It's there for a specific reason. And I know what the reason is. And I have to put that reason into place. So I finance specific things within the kingdom of God, within the house of God. And because of that, God says, now I will cover that business and I will protect it. All right? So that's important. So there's a direct link between God's house and the lack that we are experiencing. So we need to be vigilant with that. All right, and I'm going to get into this in a, in a moment. So you've got to connect with a house, number one. And you've got to sow into the house. Because the test of maturity lies in can you be trusted. Luke 6.13 says, No one can serve two masters. Either will hate the one, love the other one, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So choose. Who do you want to serve? Money, sh you should never serve money. Money should always serve you. You should never look for money. Money should be looking for you. Why? Because goedheid en gin sal my volg. And the Bible says, even if I run, the blessings of God will catch up. So don't run like this. Run. So the point of the whole, the whole teaching this, this, this day is, that we become responsible, gain knowledge, gain understanding, and then use wisdom to implement and put into practice and manage what we've been entrusted with. So that the more that we seek will be attracted. I want to end with these couple of questions quickly. Number one, what has God given you? And, and now please, I, I'm going to use examples, but I'm using examples, and I'm not picking on anyone. I'm just using examples. You buy a car, or you buy a bus, but it's only you and one other person riding in the bus. Why did you buy the bus? 
just because you want to be impressive or you want to be effective. So now you buy the bus and you say, okay, God, how can I serve your kingdom? I can serve your kingdom by bringing people to church. Dan sê jy, nee, daar sê my nie nie. Hy ook klim nie met sy veel voet in my kar nie. It's not your call. It's God's call. Because what has God given you? Because everything that God gives you, He gives you because He wants you to serve His kingdom with it. Why will God give you two or three or four cars? Just because you can afford it? No, there's a reason why He gives it to you. Why is He giving you a big house? There's a reason why. Why is He giving you gifts to be able to fix a car? Because He needs you to help people, specifically women in church who don't have the money, to service their cars. You can do it for them. It is a way of serving God. Why does God give you the ability to do electrical work? Because the church needs electrical work done. And that's one of the things that we can use to serve. I have a lot of electricians, and when I need somebody, I phone them and tell them, listen, I need this done, and we've got to do this done, and we've got to get that done. And then they come and do it. And it's a service to the church. And I'm not saying we want things for nothing. What we are saying is we bring, our, we bring our giftings and we put it before God and we say, Lord, how can I serve you with this? So my car is not my car, it's God's car. So what has He given me? And here's the question, are you a good manager? Are you looking after what God has given you? Okay, guys, niks for meer frustrerend for me nie. As iemand vir jou sê, rei gau saam met my. En die maak die deur oop. En die KFC bucket. En die Nando's pakkies. En alles val by die deur uit. En jy moet so jou voet in sit. En die goed so sê. En dan sê hulle, sorry, sorry, ons kan like nie altyd so nie. Jy lieg. I have this habit, I'll look at your car. And I'll tell you what kind of person you are. How you take care of your car. Manne, I kijk naar je vrouw. Dan weet ik wat ze type man is jy. Dan weet ek, kijk jy van, jy en jy en beter like jy pastoor. Children, children are the, are, the, are the best. When that child comes around the corner and, and they normally run to me and, you know, we hug them and we talk to them and that. But the next week they don't come around the corner and they're kind of like, they don't know what to do. Then I know, you eat van my geskinner. No rocket science in this job. It's just perception. Are you a good manager? Third question, do you steward the, the, the little effectively? And here's a question that you have to be honest with yourself. Can you be trusted with much? As jy vanavond hier sit, nie, en jy sê, as toe, die Heere kan vir my vanavond een miljoen rand gee, en ek beloof jou, gaan het, ek, man, ek weet, ek, gaan het, ek wil jy met jou hart check, en ek denk jy ook vir jouself. Ek sê nie, amal nie, nou, Want ek weet, if I drop a million rand in your hand right now, het gaan jou, jou wielikies laat afval. En die hele nacht wakkel en sê, jy weet nie wat moet ek nie doen. But you see, we gotta go back to the first question is, or the second question is, are you a good manager? Because if you're not a good manager, you, you will never be trusted with wealth. 